All right. So we did the risers. Go check that out. We got the fallers here. Uh, starting the faller list off. Uh, we got I'm going I'm going Jameer Gibbs here. What do we think about that? Falling down a little bit from, uh, you know, kind of being a, a, a third roundish startup super flex tight end premium pick is is he got you concerned uh, moving forward? We got KJ uh, at the FFB tech uh, on Twitter cool. here. Uh, what are your thoughts here on on Gibbs kind of moving forward? We thought maybe this was going to be a little bit more juice on this game. Can I just say, if you watch the game, I thought it was much better than what it, it did. Uh, the, it it looks better. Line looks like it certainly yeah. did. It's just you, you, it's one of those things where. All off season, you heard they have all these plans and all this stuff for different usage with Jameer. And it's every time with stuff like this, it never happens. Tony Pollard, when Zeke was there, was time. Oh, we're going to use him in so many different ways. It's like for this usage, why didn't you just keep Swift? Um, but we're in the first three games of the season. So, uh, you know, as they're going, they've kind of said they want to slow play this, figure it out a little bit. I don't think, you know, they were hoping that they could get Monty. Uh, you know, obviously for longer than you had him here. So Gibbs moving forward as he dropped down some spots, is there somebody you'd rather have than Gibbs right now? But thoughts on Gibbs? No, I'm not worried. Uh, so he was kind of thrust into the role because of injury, but I think that this was always the plan, right? They just wanted to get him acclimated a little bit before they did it, which sucks. I mean, you know, you, you probably spent a really high pick on Gibbs and you wanted to see immediate results, but uh, I'll let you know, that the Gibbs owner right now may be a little scared. I think you hold like you're, you're Toto right now. You hold the line. Man. That's right. Like you, can't, you can't, you can't bail out now. You know why? Cause next week, Cause love isn't always Green on Bay. time. <laughs> <laughs> the next week they play Green Bay. It's, it's exactly what the doctor ordered for Gibbs. If money is even limited, like I, if he gets this kind of workload again next week, he's going to explode. Uh, so I, I think that you're you're holding or you're buying. You're not selling. You can't sell. You cannot sell at a, a depreciated no, I, cost right now. I agree. And it, I think most of it is that you haven't seen that one signature explosive play from him. I think as soon as that happens, the value goes. If there is any dip, the value goes right back to where it was. So if you want to buy a dip, it might be here. I think well, kind of like you alluded to. Yeah, we saw week one. Like if you watch every touch that he had week one out of the gate, it wasn't much. I think he had like nine touches or something like that. It was or no, he had he had double digit maybe. But no, it was nine. Still it it was nine. Okay. Uh but every touch he was electricity. Yeah. Like he was just bottled, man. And every hit he just shed off. And somebody with his frame, I I, I don't see how he could even take some of these hits and keep Dude. trucking and he, he's legit like he is going to be a problem he gets popped and doesn't go down he just like he's the contact balance is through the it's like fucking roof reverberates it down into the ground and keeps moving yeah which it's i'm with you how does he keep taking Alvin these hits Kamara, but, yeah yeah i mean it's just it, it doesn't bother him the contact balance is phenomenal and i think it's coming you can't be selling uh yeah, if you've been watching sure. him move out there it's what you thought he was so he just Hold this out, I mean, you know, like they spent so much money on him. They got a plan, but they got a long, it's a long season. You know, yeah. there's no reason to force these dudes. That's what you, everyone's going to have to live with this fact that these running backs aren't going to get all the fucking work. Look at what they're doing with Bijan. They're like, you know, yeah. like well, just, Bijan at least has given you the big weeks and the, and the sexy plays, you know, and, and this week, you know, hampered a little bit. But, you know, even with splitting carries with, kind of like they're doing with Jim Gibbs here, you know, the passing game work all funnels to Gibbs and, you know, Bijan's made some great plays where they're, you know, with that crazy camera angle and the touchdown. And, you know, we just quite haven't seen it as, you know, it hasn't been as featured and as blown up as, as uh, Bijan has been with Gibbs, but Gibbs has had some plays. You just have to pay attention a little more. Yeah. If Gibbs gets two targets again in a week, I'm going to full on riot. Right. The ball also deserves makes no plus. sense. Right. Especially yeah. when, you know, you are like you thought if it's going to be the week, damn, we're, we're St. Brown's down. Reynolds is coming in with a groin, doesn't really do anything. You know, Laporta's here, you know, basically, obviously St. Brown did what St. Brown does in this game. But Laporta's your second leading receiver with a huge target share. So you thought it could be Gibbs, especially with no Monty, uh, even with Monty to not have him being in their pass game a little bit more. Who is who's a nice pass catcher had been a little frustrating with his usage. So. Um, hoping that improves. Uh, let's keep it moving. Let's go. Justin Fields. He was on, I forget what list last week, but basically in the same vein of falling, uh, a little bit here. 
Uh, 11 for 22, 99 yards, a touchdown and INT, and 11 for 49 rushing. He wasn't going to be so robotic this week. The Chiefs got on him early, uh, shut all that shit down. He just looks lost in the sauce, like he can't process. Uh, and, you know, if I'm if I'm the Bears, I fire Luke Getze right now. If I want to try to see if I can do anything, I fire Luke Getze right now, and I call Greg Roman, and I say, hey, Greg, why don't you come over here? Do, you run the offense that you ran with Lamar for two. We know that the Roman offense gets stale, but we know that the Roman offense can seemingly walk some running quarterbacks into success for a couple of years. Well, go get him. And if you want to keep this Fields project going, try it out with him and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Hey, Fields, go nuts. Because when Fields runs, he's awesome. Lamar had an MVP season under the tutelage of of uh Greg Roman of Greg Roman. So, you know, go, go do that because whatever's going on there, it ain't working. It's not get, you know, Getsy and him aren't, aren't mixing whatever, whatever they're calling isn't working. Justin Fields, it's got to, it, I'm not just saying, Hey, you know, fire gets, I don't know that Getsy is a bad offensive coordinator. I think you just fields is, is broken. It's not working. You got to do something. You got to call Travis Kelsey and see if Taylor Swift has a friend. <laughs> That can change his career, you know? So it just, it feels like Fields is kind of one foot in the grave right now, man. Like we're, we're, the fantasy points are always going to be just fine, but are, we're starting to worry about long-term. Longevity. We're going to get on our second team and then we're on a short leash and what the hell happens here? Like I bears are in the leader in the clubhouse for the Caleb Williams sweepstakes as far as I'm concerned, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they absolutely are. And this is decision time, right? Uh, I will say as a fantasy manager, I'm I'm unfazed right now. Like sure. I, I uh, As a Packers fan, it's going to sound super patronizing, but I'm so sorry, Bears fans, that this has happened to you yet again. Uh, I mean, but he, he started slow last year and he turned it around. Let's just hope that this can happen again. Uh, I mean, we saw 11 carries this last game, which is the highest he's had over the last three weeks. I'm hoping they start implementing more rushes. So I, I hope they're trying to try to make some shifts in the offensive plays calling. It still it didn't look good. And no. but the problem is when I watch fields, a lot of it was on fields. Like I, I've watched him over the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks just to see if the progression is coming. And he's he's making pretty bad reads and just holding the ball too long. He can't get rid of it. And I'm like, hey, either a you're you're telling him to make something happen and he's not getting the ball out of his hands quick or he's just incapable of doing so. I, I don't know what it is yet, but I will say yet again, uh, this is the week to buy Justin Fields. I've, uh, if I say this every week, one of these weeks, it's going to be. <laughs> right. uh, but next week they're playing Denver. And I think it's just what the doctor ordered. Ugh. So it looks like they've got a couple good matchups coming up with Denver, Washington, mm -hmm. Minnesota, Vegas, Chargers. I mean, yep. that's got th 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 that looks like a five week stretch of hey, let's see what what we can see do what's here. going on here. But this if he doesn't do it next week, like I, I mean, you're selling low, man. I, I think you, you kind of have to. I, I don't know because you're not buying. You're, you're not selling high anymore. I, mm -hmm. I think that his his rushing. Uh, capability will still keep him in one of those upper echelons that you can get a good amount for him. But if he can't get it done against Denver next week, I am definitely changing my tune. Yeah. It's, it's just, he looks like he has narcolepsy and when he's dropping back, he just falls asleep and it's, then oh, yeah. <laughs> he wakes up and he's like, oh, I got to run. I'm Holy shit. That all was out. Uh, and he's, he's picking to throw like at bad times and then picking to run at bad times. It yeah. seems it's really strange. Like he'll, he'll miss wide open reads that he seemingly looks at and yeah. then rushes straight into a D line. Like we saw last week. Yeah. All right. So fields falling down T law, maybe falling down a little bit, getting worried here. Um, you know, 18 points week one, then nine points and 15.4, according to fantasy pros uh, last week uh, against the Texans. And, and obviously lose that game, you know, went back and watched that one. Super concerned, not really. He, he's tied for fifth in attempts with 113, tied for six in completions with 73. Only three TDs, two INTs, 11% drop rate, uh, which right off the rip, Calvin Ridley dropped one down the sideline there. Calvin Ridley dropped a couple. Calvin Ridley game incoming here at some point because he's he's getting open and doing the things. It just I want to say there was like four touchdown drops in the week two game too. Right. So he's 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 not getting helped out, but he's still ninth in yards, third in PFF grade, fifty nine yards rushing. He ran a little bit in this game, which you're hoping to see maybe a little bit more of that from from and no rushing touchdowns uh, from Lawrence either uh, right now. So you know I think the best is yet to come. I don't think I'm super worried, but he's he's certainly hurting me in superflex right now in, in those spots where you were counting on him to be a, a you know you know 
yeah, you're ra- you raising all your boats yeah. here, yeah. and he, he's not. Uh, he's he's hurting you a little bit. So, any um, any thoughts on maybe trying to move on from T Law if he bounces back a little bit, or what are we thinking? I mean, I'm worried that you're going to be holding a little bit longer because I, I mean, let's see here. His next two games are Atlanta and Buffalo. He could have a good game against Atlanta, but I think their defense is actually pretty dang good. Yeah. They, they haven't they haven't shown poorly uh, even against some some decent play. So uh, I, I don't know. To, uh, next week is definitely going to say a lot. I'm not really trying to move one way or the other. You paid a pretty good amount to get T-Law. I think that you're probably holding i don't think anybody's really buying so that's the only reason i'm not selling if somebody wants to pay up to get dila i think i'll do it but yeah i, I i'm worried for sure i would buy i'd yeah, buy i'll pay up you'll pay up to get t-law right now sure. maybe not pay up to or I mean, a t-law well that's what i'm saying you're gonna have to i'm two. not sending you know i'm keeping Tua. two or a t-law yeah, I'm, I'm still taking Trav. I'm still taking Trav. I'm taking I'm taking Trav. I'm sticking with Trav still. I'm not gonna fall victim to recency <laughs> bias here. I think that Zay Zay being out this week actually kind of plays a difference for him. And I mean, when we look at last week, I, I mean he was what almost in on two touchdowns. Uh I think that better days are coming for sure. I mean, you, you can't move off him now, but uh, like I said, nobody who has T Law is selling for for anything. But I I will say that I, you know heads up Tua for T Law. I'm holding Tua. I think that offense is too good to to try to move around. It's not the offense with Tua that scares me. It's the it's the head. It's the head. Hey, yeah. he he was doing like jujitsu or <laughs> judo or something. He's fine. He's so got it, a pillow stuck in there. He or does something. fall better now. To jujitsu. Yeah, he's doing good. Know? He's uh you know it's it's and really I think the big thing was that we just. We thought the Jaguars were taking a step forward here with offensive production, and they were exactly. they were going to be a thirty point a game kind of team, you know, offensively. And it just it hasn't quite clicked and gelled yet. So, sticking with T Law, still not terribly worried, but seems like you know there is a potential down arrow right now that's a little little worrisome. Uh, but I think Are we're going to be all right. Are you moving in your rankings? Uh, I, like I said, I think I'm I'm staying steadfast at the moment, but it, it's on uh, it's a lot more. Uh, uncertain than I than I thought it would be T-Law at this or point Deshaun. in the season. I'll stick with T-Law. T-Law. Yeah. Be yeah, Anthony Richardson or T-Law. Rich. Ooh, a rich. T-Law or Caleb Williams. <laughs> Get out of here! I'll take Caleb Williams sight unseen. But yeah. Fuck it. All right, let's go. Fuck it. Let's go. Last one here, the faller, a little bit, which we talked to him in the in the risers for a second on some trade target action. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, maybe falling down a little bit here, uh, but uh, a, a few positive things I think, like the like the um, T law, couple of percentages and and facts that we laid out there. Uh, sixth in route run per drop back at fifty four percent, like overall in running back. So it's it's the 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 route running is, is still at least there. Bijan, CMC, and uh, White were all guys that were uh, like above him coming into pre week three with White because obviously we're recording on a Monday, so we don't know what that was. Um, but those are obviously guys that you covet because of the route running, and which is why why you really liked, uh, or at least I really liked. Uh, Ramondre coming into the season because he was right up there with Eckler and CMC last year uh, and a lot of those uh, metrics in that regard. 10.4% uh, of team target share, good for only 23. So that's really the big difference uh, kind of right now, I think. He's he's getting the routes run but not getting the target share. Uh, 12th in snap percentage was 70.6. So that's, that's still pretty good. And seconds in route run was 73. So it's all still there. It's just not happening. Um, so anybody scared off of of Ramondre right now and and is trying to maybe move off because it does seem like it's a little rocky right now. Uh, no, I'm I'm still buying. Uh, I, I think that you know his snap his snap share is not going anywhere. Uh, you know it's not like anybody else is really stealing his targets. It's just uh, why can't we have nice things with Patriots running backs? Like I don't get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Uh, Elliot, you know, he's, his attempts were definitely the highest it's been over the last three, three weeks, slightly concerning. He's not doing a ton with it. I mean, his yards per carry were actually pretty decent. decent. He's at five. Yeah. He looked fine this uh, game, this really. Three. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that, that I can't just say that this is going to be forever. I don't know. I, I like, I think Stevenson is still better than what we've seen this far. And we've, we've seen it in previous years. And we saw it last year that he could just explode on a given week. It's just, I think this is Patriots stubbornness, man. I really do. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm buying because I think he's at a, he's at a depressed cost. I, I'm not slipping him too far. I am going to bump him down a couple of tier, uh, or a couple of players. But yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. But I'm still buying as well. I think yeah, I think that was I a think, good yep. uh, summation there. And and I think it, it's coming. You had Philly in the nasty weather week one, which was actually surprisingly his best game because um, he they, he did you know catch some balls. Um, and then the Miami game, they just looked at the offense just looked so out of sync that whole game. It was very strange. Miami's had their number. Uh, and then the Jets come in here again. Uh, terrible weather. The Jets defense, you know, I think it felt like it. Belichick was just like, hey, we're just going to com- just not make any mistakes and we'll we'll just we'll eventually just win this game. And I think, you know, you hate I. I hate to blame matchups on every bad thing that's happened, but it does seem like, again, defense has been prevailing a little bit more than offense in a lot of situations. I think Ramondre uh, will, will come around and, and, you know, I'm not benching him uh, just yet by any means. And I'm certainly buying and, but, but could say, Hey, I'd, I'd, I'd slide him down a, a few spots here. So anything else on, uh, on Ramondre here before we get out of the fallers category? No, I mean, he had 19 Are you attempts worried about the Dallas matchup at all. Nah, I mean, go. not with what James Conner just did. <laughs> James Conner just did. Hey, but <laughs> but Dallas bounced back. You know, I'm gonna stop doubting James Conner. Yeah, for sure. I never started. <laughs> we never yeah. started. Certainly, we've been we've been on James Conner since out of pit, boy. Let's go. Um, <laughs> um, but no, I I I don't think so. He's staying in the lineup for me. I mean, New Orleans and Dallas are are not easy matchups. New Orleans has got a decent defense as well. Um, and the Jets are tough defense too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they, they got studs rolling out there. Nineteen attempts and four targets. I mean, that's, that's you just the you just type gotta, of work you're looking for. You, you're right, exactly. You just got to get back to you know the higher um, target percentage here. With you know he's only twenty third in target share with the running back. So we we got to get that back up into those upper echelon numbers with the into the the twenties or eighteens or whatever where he was last year. So. I think that'll come uh, new offense, new offensive coordinator. Right. So real offensive coordinator, <laughs> real offensive. Coordinator. Not terribly worried about Ramondre, but yeah, that'll that'll wrap up the fallers. Anybody else got anybody on the way out with uh, somebody that you're worried about? Christian Kirk rising up, uh, but still falling back in the risings for me. He'd be a, a sell if I Rankings. if I'm, I'm still trying to sell Christian Kirk, Zay Flowers or Zay Jones out this week. Um, so got you. Got you another good game here. Um Maybe maybe Jones misses another one and gives you more opportunity to say, hey, we could sell Christian Kirk, but very worried about Kirk moving forward, not playing in 12, which he played in 12 this week and still needed that late, later touchdown when they were getting killed to to make your day, uh, make it worth starting Kirk this week when all things were really in his favor. So, yeah, uh, yeah, very true. Uh, I think that, yeah, his definitely his arrows pointing up. Uh, I'm going to throw one in there just because I really want to hit this on the second week consecutively uh go to anybody and tell them that sky Moore got more targets this week and try to sell them for anything sky Moore, out on the on the on the decline for you he did did yeah i think he led the team in targets this week right yeah he did absolutely so. but if you just watch the game and watch how right. they trust rushy rice i mean yeah. they're trending very different directions rice on the rookie report uh for us and i definitely he's he's in the buy camp for me before it's too late kind of deal so um all right let's get out of here we appreciate you be sure to like subscribe comment below uh discord follow kj at the ffb tech on the uh, on the twitter machine good follow over there and uh you know he'll be on many many shows to come we appreciate you uh and we'll catch you next time peace